Hi everyone, in this video I will explain uh, how Spring Security works and how it can help us secure our web applications. So what is Spring Security? Uh, Spring Security is basically a bunch of serverless filters that uh, checks authentication, authorization, server error, of course, before your request hits your controller. So basically, uh, before your request hit the controller, uh, it needs to go in, it needs to go through a bunch of filters that do some security checks. And a servlet uh, filters is simply an object, a Java object, that performs a filtering task at the pre-processing and post-processing of a request. So think of it like uh, an object that uh, executes a if statement. So if uh, the checks are true, we continue, otherwise we break. So it just uh, check and filter our request. So usually these uh, checks are security checks. For example, we got a filter for authentication, we got another filter for authorization, and that's it. So this is basically how Spring Security works. It's based on serverless filters. So let's see the case with no filters or with no Spring Security. So if we're working with no Spring Security, we basically have our HTTP request come in from, let's say, a browser. It go through the dispatcher servlet and it goes directly to our controller. So it doesn't really go through any uh, checks for security. But the moment we add Spring Security to our application, we get these filters. So we have our HTTP request and before it reach the dispatcher servlet and controllers, it need to go through all these filters. And we call these filters a filter chain. So our request go through this first, this first filter. Let's say it checks for authentication. If it's good, then we pass to the second filter. Let's say it checks for CRF. If it's good, we pass to other filters and we go on until we go through all these filters. And if it's, uh, if it's, good, if it's good, then uh, the request reach the controller. So this is how uh, Spring Security basically uh, checks for security. And let's suppose, for example, this is the filter that checks for authorization and it fails. So what Spring Security uh, does, it will break the filter chain and it will return a 41 or 403 error to the browser. So it won't actually, the request won't actually uh, arrive at the controller because uh, it didn't uh, require and didn't uh, uh, the filter was not uh, was not checked. So this is how Spring Security works. It works thanks to these filters. And you might say that it's pretty complicated to actually ch uh, change these uh, filters. But the thing is, as a developer, uh, you don't really need to touch these filters. These filters are actually built in by sec uh, by Spring Security. Uh, by default. So as a developer, uh, you only need to configure this filter to your need. So if you want to customize these filters, you can do it easily without actually touching the these filters. Uh, now let's take uh, an example. Let's say I have this uh, application that return. I have these two endpoints, cats endpoints and high endpoints that returns uh, high and uh, this application is not really secure anyone can access uh, this uh, application so i want to make it secure so how do we do that okay so as i said we, we use spring security and uh, i will go ahead and add it to my bomb.xml file and uh, you just add the dependency for uh, spring security I will also add the testing uh, module and I import my new added uh, dependencies. Okay, great. So now I will execute my application again and we will see what, what will happen. Okay, the application is running. Uh, let's check again. And uh, our application is secure right now by default. 
we can't really access our endpoints. So if I try to access high, I can't. If I try to access cats, I can't. So this is the default uh, security uh, that implemented in Spring Security. And if we go to the console right here, we can actually check all the filters that are uh, used by Spring Security. The filter that I talked about earlier. So they say here we'll secure any request with. And we got the first uh, filter, Web Async Manager Integration Filter. We have the Security Context Persistence Filter. We have the Header Writer Filter. We had the CRF Filter. We have the Logout Filter. So we got all a bunch of filters. And you can actually check uh, the code source of this uh, of these filters if you are interested to see how they work. For example, this filter. Uh, this is how it works. So it basically get the, the username and the password from uh, the parameter from uh, uh, let's say from the request parameter. There we go. So it gets the username for request get parameter and the password from the password parameter. So if we go right here and we open the developer tools, we can say that there we go. We have two inputs, username and password. And this is how this filter works. It takes these two inputs and do some authentication checks. Uh, we also got uh, others uh, filters, obviously. We got uh, the default login page. So this is the page that we actually see on the screen in the UI. The, the, this filter is the one that creating this page. So we can go to this uh, filter right here. And uh, if you if you want to understand the filter, you just go ahead to the method do filter, do filter. There we go. So this is actually the 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 function that executed when we check a filter. So what this uh, method does, it basically check uh, for if the user it, it is authenticated. We just go to the other filter using chain.filter. Otherwise, we return an HTML page, this one, this page right here. And this page right here is the one that we are seeing here. So this is the filter that actually creating this page. And as I said, we have a bunch of other filters that you can check for yourself if you want to understand how they work. But you absolutely do not need to know these filters because, as I said, we only do uh, configuration using a Java class. We don't really touch to these uh, filters. So we will do so. How do we configure these filters? You just create a class. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it security config. And we have to we have uh, to add some annotation. The first one is configuration. And the configuration means that we are we will be returning some bins in this uh, uh, in this uh, class. Another uh, annotation we will add is enable web security. So the thing we want to do actually here is we will extend a class. It's called web security, web secure, security configure adapter. And this is the default, uh, this is the class that are, that are doing all of this, this stuff right here. So we, we will override so we can add our cust a custom uh, uh, custom thing. So we will be overriding some methods. And the first method we'll be overriding is called uh, configure. Override method, there we go. And we will be overriding this one, this method. And we can check how this method is working. And by the way, this is the default. Uh, this is default. Uh, this is what we are working with right now. So we can actually. This is what 
Spring Security does by default. It just uh, any request that we are having, it should be authenticated. And we go through this form login in HTTP basic. I will actually do the same thing. I won't really add be adding that much. And we just leave the same uh, thing. But I will change uh, this authorized request. So what I'll be doing is I will be allowing some request. And how do we do that? I use AntMatcher, and AntMatcher just give it uh, what uh, you just give it a pattern, basically, and I'll give it the slash cats. So I want all uh, the requests that are slash cats. I don't want them to be authenticated. So I just add permit all. So I'm, I'm permitting. I'm leaving this request uh, with no security. But for any other request it should be authenticated. So only for slash cats that I want it to be permitted. But for all the other requests, it should be authenticated. So let's do it. Let's stop and rerun. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's uh, reload. And let's say I want to go to high. They won't let me. But if I go to cats, I actually can do that. I get the result because as I said uh, right here in this method, I permitted the slash cats pattern so it won't actually get authenticated. So I can, uh, thanks to this method, I can customize my Spring Security, uh, how uh, Spring Security control my request. Let's say I want to disable, for example, CRF. I can absolutely do that, disable, for example, or if you want to check or modify cores, you can also do that. So it really depends on you and on your needs. Uh, we don't really touch the filters. The filters are working behind the scene. What you actually do, you just customize how these filters are working using this uh, security config class that we extend from this web security configure adapter and you just basically uh, override this method configure and that's it that's how uh, you work with speaking security you just uh, customize uh, your this method and it will change uh, the filters behind the scene so this is how spring security works